Hi, my name is Clayton and I'm a registered dietitian and calisthenics athlete and today I'm going to take creatine for the first time in my life. I'm going to take it every day for the next 83 days. Why? Well, if you haven't heard, creatine is one of the most widely used supplements in the world and for good reason. Creatine increases your physical performance by boosting your strength and explosion during exercise. So I want to see for myself what all the hype is about. I want to see how much stronger I can get in the next 83 days. I'm going to test my max strength for four different exercises. My one rep max for weighted pull-ups, reps with a 60 pound weight vest for push-ups, advanced tongue front lever hold for time, and pistol squats for reps. I just finished a deload week and today's my first day back to hard training and I'm going to test my max on all these movements and compare them 83 days from now after taking creatine and training with creatine. Over those 83 days, I will do five weeks of hard training, followed by a deload week, followed by another five hard weeks of training, followed by another deload week where I will taper off to test my one rep max on that weighted pull-up, reps with a 60 pound weight vest in push-ups, advanced tuck front lever hold for time, and pistol squats for reps. Creatine is one of the most safe and effective supplements you can take to improve athletic performance. And according to the International Society of Sports Nutrition Physician Stand, safety and efficacy of creatine supplementation in exercise, sport, and medicine. Creatine is one of the most popular nutritional ergogenic aids for athletes. Studies have consistently shown that creatine supplementation increases intramuscular creatine concentration, which may help explain the improvements in high intensity exercise performance, leading to greater training adaptations in addition to athletic and exercise improvements. Research has shown that creatine supplements may enhance post exercise recovery, injury prevention, thermal regulation, rehabilitation, and concussion and or spinal cord neuroprotection. Additionally, a number of clinical applications of creatine supplementation have been studied involving neurodegenerative diseases. Studies have shown that short and long-term supplementation up to 30 grams per day for five years is safe and well-tolerated in healthy individuals and in a number of patient populations ranging from infants to elderly. In terms of safety, since creatine monohydrate became a popular dietary supplement in the early 90s, over 1,000 studies have been conducted and billions of servings of creatine have been ingested. The only consistently reported side effect from creatine supplementation has been described in the literature has been weight gain. Available short and long-term studies in healthy and diseased populations from infants to elderly at dosing ranges from 0.3 to 0.8 grams per kilogram per day for up to five years have consistently shown that creatine supplementation poses no adverse health risks and may provide a number of health and performance benefits. Additionally, assessments of adverse events reports related to dietary supplementation, including in pediatric populations, have revealed that creatine was rarely mentioned and was not associated with any significant number or any consistent pattern of adverse events. Position of the International Society of Sports Nutrition. Creatine monohydrate is the most effective ergogenic and nutritional supplement currently available to athletes with the intent of increasing high intensity exercise capacity and lean body mass during training. In conclusion, creatine monohydrate remains one of the few nutritional supplements for which research has consistently shown ergogenic benefits. Additionally, a number of potential health benefits have been reported from creatine supplementation. Part of this creatine taking experiment involves checking my weight before and after these 83 days. As you can see here, my weight is 168.6 pounds and I will check it again on my last day of taking creatine. So not only will I be testing my max, checking my weight, but I also want to see if there's any changes in my physique between before and after taking creatine over these 83 days. And I want to see if creatine changes the definition of my muscles. And so here I got myself doing the front double by, the single by, and whatever this one is, I don't know the names to the postures and poses bodybuilders do on stage, but here they are. Slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man. I still go. Go. Hustle lot, hustle every single day. I'll be making moves till I'm buried in my grave. Uh, to the system, I don't wanna be a slave. I've been doing shit my way, uh, or the highway. And in the driveway is a nice range. Cause I grind through the climb, I invite pain. You never hear me, bitch, nah, I don't complain. Just gotta flip the switch and you can go and obtain. Anything you want, anything you need Your mind's got the key ingredient, it's belief uh, They deceive with the negativity But I just slide right by that energy uh, Even 
Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never ran, said a no, man, I still go. Go, 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 go. But even that could change You could flip the gray matter Like some batter in your brain uh, That's why they say Fake it till you make it, eh And if you play that game Then you just might make a change Rearrange all the bad to okay Take the worst I say And turn them to a game Take the best I say And put them on display On repeat in your brain Till you're feeling no more pain uh, Never slow yourself down You can do some more Push past start a pain And you'll find a door Open it up And finally explode Everything that you thought You could never do Slow, you can still go Even when there's no hope, you can still go I never answer to no, man, I still go Go, go According to the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition, creatine supplementation with specific view to exercise sports performance and update. When you first start taking creatine, you might choose to do a loading phase. A loading phase is 20 to 25 grams of creatine per day or 0.3 grams per kilogram of body weight per day split into four to five equal portions for five to seven days. This is recommended to quickly saturate skeletal muscle stores with creatine. After your loading phase, you will then enter your maintenance phase. A maintenance phase for most people is three to five grams of creatine or 0.03 grams per kilogram per day of creatine. However, more recent research has shown that creatine supplementation at the dose of 0.1 grams per kilogram of body weight combined with resistance training, as most people will be doing when they're taking creatine, will improve training adaptations. It is recommended that you take creatine with a source of carbohydrate and or protein to help increase absorption and saturation into the skeletal muscle tissue. So for me, at a body weight of 168.6 pounds, doing 0.1 milligrams per kilogram body weight comes to 7.65 grams of creatine per day for my maintenance phase. But I'm going to round up to 10 grams per day because according to the evidence-based recommendations at exam.com, higher doses of creatine up to 10 grams per day may be beneficial for people with higher amounts of muscle mass and high activity levels or for those who are non-responders to 5 grams of creatine per day. So 
what you actually want to do is leave a little bit of that seal intact as straight of a line as possible so when you're getting scoops of creatine or any other supplement like protein powder you can pack it and then slide the top of it so that way you get an even level scoop First time taking creatine. Has like an industrial smell actually, but uh, see how it goes. Yeah, it basically, it tastes like nothing in your water really. It has very minimal flavor and which is great because <laughs> you don't want a supplement that tastes bad. Uh, that won't be good for compliance in protocols. So, they recommend mixing it with whatever your favorite fluid is. So like you mix it with a little juice or Powerade or whatever it is that you're drinking. So for today, I'm gonna be taking a total of four servings of five grams of creatine each serving. And since I just took my first serving, I have three more servings to go. As I'm doing the loading protocol right now at 20 grams a day for the first seven days. I love training. I've been consistently in the gym working out my entire life. I grew up wrestling and then transitioned into jujitsu after high school and then got into rock climbing. And now most recently, I've been obsessed with calisthenics. I train four days per week and try to have active recovery days on my rest days. As shown here, my favorite exercises are the one arm pull up, weighted pull up, muscle up, weighted push up and front lever work. Because I've been training for so many years and currently have a high level of strength, making gains in strength is harder and takes more time. Of course, anyone who trains will make progress, but since I'm at an advanced stage, it's much slower for me. However, the question is, will creatine accelerate my strength gains and does my performance increase just by taking it? So you might be asking, what is creatine? Creatine is an amino acid that helps you produce more ATP during intense exercise. ATP or adenosine triphosphate is the first most readily available fuel source our muscles use for high intensity exercise, such as like when you're sprinting, squatting, deadlifting, or in my case, doing weighted pull-ups. So by taking creatine as a supplement, you have a greater ability to produce ATP during high intensity exercise, which translates to you generating more force and power for longer periods of time during exercise. And for you physiology enthusiasts out there, the metabolic pathway for ATP production or regeneration using creatine in the cell is as follows. A creatine phosphate molecule transfers a high energy phosphate group to the adenosine diphosphate or ADP using the enzyme creatine kinase resulting in the production of adenosine triphosphate or ATP, which can be used for fuel. Stored intramuscular ATP combined with the ATP generated through the creatine phosphorylation as shown here provides about 15 seconds of fuel during maximal effort exercise. Additionally, creatine is naturally produced in your body in your kidneys, liver, and pancreas. It's made from three amino acids, glycine, arginine, and methionine. And on average, people produce one to two grams of creatine per day. And it's also found in foods like chicken, pork, fish, and other meat products. So an omnivorous diet, usually somebody consumes somewhere between one to two grams of creatine per day, which is primarily stored in your skeletal muscle as phosphocreatine. 
Interestingly, in addition to the physical benefits supplementing with creatine provides, it has also been shown to increase levels of creatine in the brain by nearly 10%, which is thought to improve brain health. It's thought that by taking creatine supplementation improves brain function by improving the energy supply to the brain. One study, people who supplemented with eight grams of creatine per day for five days re reduced mental fatigue during mathematical calculations compared to those taking the placebo. Uh, as well as multiple studies have found that taking a dose of five to 20 grams of creatine per day can improve short-term memory and intelligence in healthy people. But I won't be testing my cognitive ability in this video, uh, but I am interested to see how my performance changes, if at all, at work as I'm a registered dietitian, which requires me to be able to recall large quantities of medical nutritional therapies from various disease states and critical care conditions each day, depending on the caseload I see at the hospital I work. I just finished my first five week training block and now I'm starting my deload week. So I'm almost halfway through this experiment and I can already tell I'm making gains in strength and I'm excited to see what the end results will be. I've gained some weight, two pounds to be exact, which I know is water retention in my muscles from the creatine as my diet has stayed consistent. In regards to my physique, I feel my muscles do have a more full appearance, which is also due to the water retention. Now I want to talk about the creatine brand that I chose and I chose on it brand creatine because it's third party tested and it's extremely important that you choose a third party tested supplement because the FDA does not regulate supplements before they enter the market. Yes, the FDA does regulate supplements, but it regulates them under a different set of regulations than those for food and drugs. It regulates supplements under the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act of 1994, or DSHEA. Under these regulations, the maker of a supplement is not allowed to market a product that is of poor quality or that has harmful ingredients, and they must state the truth about what ingredients are in the supplement. However, the problem lies with the fact that under the DSHEA Act of 1994, the FDA does not have the authority to approve dietary supplements for safety and effectiveness or to approve their labeling before the supplements are sold to the public. This means the FDA can only get involved after a supplement is in the market. The FDA can then remove a supplement from the market if it is found to violate these requirements. The FDA monitors adverse events reports submitted by dietary supplement companies, healthcare professionals, and consumers once they are on the market and only then will take action, which means you could be buying a low quality or contaminated product, which can be dangerous to your health because not all companies are making pure, safe, and uncontaminated products. This is why it's so important to buy third-party tested supplements. A third-party tested supplement is a supplement that undergoes rigorous testing by an independent company not affiliated with the supplement manufacturer. This testing checks to make sure the supplement has exactly what it claims it has in it and at the specified dose. It also checks for purity of the supplement, meaning that it is not contaminated with any other substance such as a dangerous compound or a banned substance, which will occur if multiple supplement companies share the same processing equipment. This is why you always want to buy a third-party tested supplement, otherwise you are blindly trusting the company selling you that product. And so for these reasons, I selected the Onnit brand creatine. You can see on the side here, the Inform Sport logo. That's the logo of the third party testing company that does their quality and purity testing. And Inform Sport does quality testing for every single batch of creatine that gets released into the market, as well as regular blind testing. Another great third party testing company is the NSF Certified for Sport. And just like Inform Sport, you can go on their website and search for products they've certified so you can make the best choice about what supplements you want to use. I will leave links to their websites and all the other resources I've used during this video in the description box below. Feel the blood creeping up from the heathens Got will, got fight, got pride, got reason If they wanna go eat, then you know I'm gonna feed them If you're coming for me, hope you're ready for a demon I got eyes in the back of my head, I'm seeing Take me for granted and you know I'm leaving I'ma take what's mine with the webs I'm weaving I could take this crap from seeing to believing Got a taste for blood and my tongue keeps bleeding From the words I spit, so sharp, so freezing So cold, behold, frostbite they feeling I could tear you apart or I could go heal them Don't believe in fate, don't believe in ceilings I just need a taste and my mind starts peeling I don't pace myself, I grind on kneeling Got lust for change, I just love the feeling uh. Training is going exceptionally well during the second half of this experiment and I have already hit personal records for various lifts. But getting a PR on the post-test day will be more challenging because I have to perform multiple lifts in one session with each successive lift draining my energy output. This emulates a powerlifting competition, except I've chosen different movements.
And now, we have finally arrived to day 83. Today is the last day of this experiment. I will check my weight, physique, and do my post test for weighted pull-ups, weighted push-ups, advanced tuck, front lever hold, and pistol squats, and evaluate the results. To make sure my weight comparison from my first weight to my last weight was consistent, for each weight check, I weighed myself first thing in the morning after using the bathroom in comparable light clothing. My final weight is 173 pounds, which is a weight gain of 4.4 pounds over this 83 day experiment. My weight gain is a combination of water retention and gains in muscle mass from the strength training, as I feel just as lean now as I did when I first started, but my muscles appear visually bigger, especially my biceps, chest, and quadriceps. Just as before, I'm starting with weighted pull-ups and I'm warmed up and I have worked up to my previous best, 150 pounds. It went up really well. And because of that, I added five pounds and went for a new personal record. And because 155 pounds felt so good, I attempted 160 pounds and just barely squeezed it out. I thought I might as well try 162.5 pounds, but that went as expected and wasn't able to get my chin high enough. Next up is weighted push-ups. During my second training block, I was feeling very strong and wanted to experiment with what kind of rep range I should be shooting for during my post test. And if you were keeping a close eye during my training block number two highlights, you may have noticed I did a set with 28 reps, which was a new PR. But as you see here in my post test, I was only able to get 27 reps. However, I think my form is better in this set and you have to account for the energy depletion that occurs from testing my max weighted pull up just before this. Now on to advanced tuck front lever hold. Last up is pistol squats for reps. But I know it's not true I wanna put up all my walls Cause I'm not in the mood But then I cut myself off From the rest of the room I know that I can kneel it all If you're patient and soon It can all be worth it All the searching The results of the post-test are shocking, to be honest. It's important to keep in mind that when I first started this journey, I was not coming off a long period of time away from the gym. I was actively training to gain strength, and during my pre-test, I was feeling quite strong, as evidenced by the fact that I hit a PR on weighted pull-ups. So let's review the results. In my pre-test, I did a 150 pound weighted pull-up, and in my post-test, I did a 160 pound weighted pull-up, which is a 10 pound or 6.7% strength gain, and also a new personal record for me. This had the least improvement of all of my lifts because I'm nearing my genetic potential in this lift, and I've been training it as a main focus for many years. Next in the pre-test, I did 20 push-ups with a 60 pound weighted vest, and in the post-test, I did 27 reps for a gain of seven reps or 35% more reps. This is huge. My previous best was 23 reps prior to taking creatine. Next is advanced tuck front lever hold for time. In the pre-test, I held this position for 2506, and in the post-test, I held this position for 3404, which is an improvement of 8.98 seconds, or 35.8% longer hold time, and a new personal record. Next was pistol squats for reps. In the pre-test, I did 10 reps with my left leg and nine reps with my right leg. My left leg has always been stronger. However, in the post-test, I did 13 reps with both legs for a three rep or 30% improvement in my left leg, and a four rep or 44.4% .4 improvement 
in my right leg. These results are incredible. And although I'm shocked by the gains that I made, I shouldn't be because of what creatine does and how it improves athletic performance. I noticed quite early on that I had more energy to perform more reps during various lifts and movements. So creatine has a lot of benefits, but are there any negatives? Personally, I experienced no side effects to speak of. There is a cost to taking creatine though. I purchased an 83 day supply from Onnit for $86.40 with a promo code from Honey. This comes to $1.04 per day for 10 grams per day, including a loading phase. But you could do five grams of creatine per day, which would cost roughly 52 cents per day. This is actually quite affordable, but definitely not needed. You not need to take creatine to get strong. You need to put in high quality, consistent effort towards your goals, which includes having good nutrition, good sleep, and a healthy lifestyle to get strong. I have gone 30 years without taking creatine or any other performance enhancing supplement, and I have achieved a high level of strength. Taking creatine is the tip of the iceberg when it comes to performance. Like I mentioned, the quality of your training, diet, and sleep will be the most important aspects. With that being said, I highly recommend taking creatine if you're a performance athlete or someone looking to take their training to the next level. So thank you so much for watching. I had a ton of fun making this video and including the workouts, this video took approximately 200 hours. So if you learned something from this video or found it entertaining, I would be very grateful if you could leave a like, subscribe for more and comment down below and let me know your thoughts on creatine. So thank you very much.